Welcome everyone! In this video, we are going to be diving into my top 5 best teams for the Great League. Now, I've given everybody a little bit of time to work out the kinks of the brand new season, have a little bit of fun with all of the newly updated Pokemon, so uh, it is now time for my top 5 best teams that will help set you up for the most success in the Great League and Season 16 of Pokemon Go. Now, the meta has shifted quite dramatically. There are a lot of new faces in the meta that have become a lot more effective than they once were, so... We've got some very strong teams here that um, will uh, are built to, uh, again, set you up for the most success and um, tackle this brand new meta as effectively as possible. So without further ado, we've got some very solid teams here. Let's dive into team number one. All right, guys, kicking things off. Team number one, a very powerful team here. We've got Carbink on the lead. Gligar in the safe swap, and Metacham in the back. Now, this team, very flexible. Certainly not without its weaknesses in the meta, but very flexible. You could very easily um, put Metacham up front, especially if you are seeing a lot of Swampert leads at your particular ELO range. So, very flexible team. And there's also a very strong case to be made for running Tackle on Carbank. Now, there is a bit of a trade-off. Carbank technically more effective with the recommended Rock Throw as it does get stabbed. But Tackle um, allows Carbank to be a little bit more flexible. It also generates energy a little bit faster. So you trade a uh, trade-off of a little bit slightly more effectiveness with uh, Rock Throw, which is recommended for a little bit more flexibility and slightly faster energy generation. So um, that is... That'll basically come down to your play style and what you prefer. But this is a very strong team. Let's have a look at the scorecard for Team 1 here. And we've got a very strong scorecard here for Team 1. We get a B for coverage, A for bulk, A for safety, and an A for consistency. You literally don't get much better than that. Very powerful scorecard here. As uh, expected, three, these are three of the best Pokemon in the entire meta um, right here on Team Number 1. So Carbink on the lead, going to be very strong. A lot of trainers are preparing for Carbink and are leading a lot of Pokemon that Carbink can have some difficulty with in the meta, um, specifically Swampert. Like I said, if um, that is very difficult because this team uh, is ABA weak to Swampert. So if you are seeing a lot of those at your ELO, you are going to want to bump Metacham up to the lead, which is going to be just as effective as Carbink on the lead. Um, and Metacham uh, can handle those steel types as well. So Swampert can be tricky. That is an easy fix. What's not as easy as just simply bumping Medi up to the lead is both Cresselia and Azumarill. Cresselia to a much lesser extent. Um, I still have not been seeing nearly as many as I thought I would. Uh, but Azumarill is all over the place. Holy smokes, is Azumarill as good as it has ever been in Season 16? So it's going to take a team effort for Azumarill. Um, but the beauty is that Carbink on the lead is quite bulky. That's one where the team is flexible enough to where you can soft lose lead with Carbink. Uh, hope like heck that they're not running Hydro Pump, but I have not seen too many Hydro Pump Azumarills, especially on the lead. Azumarill, um, in fact, is generally tucked in the back these days in Season 16, so takes a team effort if you encounter it on the lead with Carbink. Uh, that's one where you can soft lose lead, and uh, you've got the flexibility in the back to still perform well, even without your Carbink. Um, but they're generally in the back, and they're generally led by an Alolan Sandslash. That's generally what you see with Azumarill. Um, so a team effort. We're soft losing lead if we encounter it on the lead, and we are going to come in with our Gligar. Um, depending on where they are on energy, you may have to give up a shield on an Ice Beam, but you should be able to farm down pretty comfortably. Shield once farmed down and go from there. Um, Cresselia, same plan with Cresselia as Azumarill, um, much less threatening to this particular team than uh, Azu is as a uh, Cresselia doesn't hit Gligar for super, doesn't hit both of your back two, 
uh, for super effective. So, uh, Cresselia, same plan, uh, much more manageable. Um, your own, uh, an opposing Gligar, a little bit tricky. That's one where you can maybe try and catch a dig on your own Gligar. That's the most effective method, but Gligar core breaks, uh, if you do lead, um, Carbank and have Medi in the back. So, um, you can catch the dig. That's the most effective method, but if you're not comfortable with doing that, um, you can just insta swap into your own Gligar and see where that goes. Uh, Metacham with an energy lead can uh, do uh, quite all right up against an opposing Gligar. Um, and uh, Carbank with a health advantage can do quite all right up against an opposing Gligar. So, the way you get those sorts of advantages is you've got to switch out. Whether you catch the dig, which is the most effective play and most devastating to your opponent onto your Gligar, or you just insta swap into your own Gligar. Uh, but everything else, pretty straightforward with this particular team. Uh, very powerful team. Definitely one I will give a try as the season progresses. Um, and it is, uh, yeah, very strong. Carbink on the lead. Your choice of rock throw or tackle. Um, Gligar on the safe swap. And Medi in the back to close. So with all that said, that is team number one. Let's have a look at team number two. All right, my friends, moving right along to team number two. Another very powerful team for season 16 of uh, Go Battle League in the Great League. Uh, it leads with Gligar this time, making a return, but this time on the lead. Uh, Dugong on the safe swap. One of the best safe swaps in the meta right now, guys. Uh, easily uh, my favorite safe swap at the moment. And Lantern in the back to bring it home for you. Very powerful team. A lot of bulk on this team. Let's have a look at the scorecard here. And we get another very strong scorecard here for team number two. Identical, in fact, to team number one. We get a B for coverage, A for bulk, A for safety, and an A for consistency. Very powerful scorecard for team number two. Let's have a look at these matchups. So Gligar on the lead. Very strong lead. Addresses a lot of what we often see in the Great League. Um, we've got a problem a little bit with Licky Tongue. It's It's manageable. It just takes a team effort. Gligar, um, you're not going to want to stay in there just in case they have uh, a potential steel type in the back. So I would stay in there, get chip with a dig, and if you're really good, you'll catch a body slam on the dugong uh, and then play on from there, try and draw out that steel type. And uh, Chrysalia, another Achilles heel here for Team 2. Again, another team effort where you will want to catch a move. Well, no, you're not going to want to catch anything, in fact, actually. But I would still chip and dip. Uh, let them throw their, throw their move. It's going to most likely be the Grass Knot as that does hit Gligar for neutral. But Gligar has the bulk to withstand a neutral Grass Knot, especially from a Pokemon like Cresselia. And then you can uh, go into Dugong and look to play on from there. Uh, Sableye on the lead. Um, not nearly as challenging as a Licky Tongue lead, as Sableye obviously not nearly as bulky. That's one, again, where you'll want to either chip, uh, chip or grab an early shield advantage from the Sableye. A lot of Sableye trainers who lead with Sableye often give up those shields very early. Uh, and, and you'll want to swap out as well because there is almost always going to be a steel type in the back behind a Sableye. It just makes perfect sense. It protects Sableye from its glaring weakness of charm uh, or any other fairy, fairy type damage for that matter. So those are the potential threats to this team. Everything else is pretty straightforward here on Team 2. I've already run a similar version of this team, which is easily becoming one of my favorites. So if you don't want to run Lantern, in the place of Lantern, you can put um, Alolan Sandslash. That's a team that I've already featured on this channel and is easily one of my favorite teams this season so far. Very powerful team. Gligar and Dugong make for a very strong core in this meta. They complement each other beautifully, almost near-perfect coverage. Um, and uh, Lantern in the back, just uh, a solid backbone to any team. Um, the, the rebalance on it, it, it will take some getting used to. It's more of a rebalance than anything. Um, 
you just have to get used to the pacing on Lantern as um, it is a much slower pacing, but you, there's a trade-off where you're doing more more damage uh, with your fast move pressure. So I, I would I would say much more of a rebalance than anything. So uh, yeah, Lantern still looking to be a bit effective in the meta. So uh, yeah, uh, that is team number two. Gligar on the lead, Dugong on the safe swap, and Lantern in the back. So with all that said, that is team two. Let's have a look at team number three. All right, here we go, making our way to team number three. Another very powerful team to get you guys that much further ahead in the Great League for season 16. It leads with Metacham on the lead. Licky Tongue back in action on the safe swap and Lantern in the back yet again here for team three, making a return. So a very powerful team, Metacham and Licky Tongue, I think we all know. Fell off for a couple of seasons, but my goodness, the, Lick, the Metacham Licky Tongue core is back in full force, as strong as it has ever been. Uh, so we all know the deal with Medi, uh, about as good of a lead as you could possibly run in the Great League. Licky Tongue, about as good of a safe swap. In fact, arguably the best safe swap in the Great League for Season 16. And we've got a solid backbone and lantern in the back. Another team with a lot of bulk on it here. Let's have a look at this scorecard here. And we get yet another identical scorecard. Three in a row. B for coverage, A for bulk, A for safety, and an A for consistency. Very powerful team here. One that I will certainly um, consider running. I have not yet been able to bring myself to run Lantern just yet this season. But we shall see. But uh, that is beside the point. Look at this uh, matchup uh run down here let's have a look at these so metacham on the lead we know the deal about as strong as it gets car bank a bit of a core breaker for the team but definitely easily very manageable with this team um the best way to play out that is to catch that moon blast on the licky and play on from there you will have landed a psychic by then and you will have a slight energy lead if you are able to successfully do that of course, the Psychics are not going to be hitting Carbank as hard, which um, buffs it a little bit up against Metajam, but still very much doable. And of course, you've got Lantern in the back, now applying more oppressive fast move pressure and can still hit Carbank for super effective. Licky can also hit Carbank for super effective and, uh, and is about as bulky as it gets. So Carbank, very manageable. Um, so yeah, at some point you want to get out of there. Whether you successfully catch that Moon Blast on Licky or not, um, uh, worst case scenario, you have to give up a shield on that. It doesn't KO, but you want to keep Medi healthy. A healthy Medi is never a bad thing in the Great League. Um, and that's really it. Everything else, straightforward, about as straightforward as it gets with this particular team. Lantern in the back, an excellent generalist. Chrysalia, going to be very tricky. A little bit of a core breaker for Metajam and Lantern. Um, but again, uh, much like with Carbank, those moon, the moon blast does not one shot, does quite a bit less, uh, coming from a Chrysalia. You do survive it. I think it does about 60% of Medicham's health from full health or so, uh, in that range. Um, so you do tank that pretty comfortably and you're still relatively healthy for a potential steel type in the back as well. So I would play that, uh, the same way as I would play a Carbank. Uh, and that's about it. Yeah, everything else about as straightforward as it gets. This is a very powerful team worth giving a shot, especially if you've gotten used to the new pacing on Lantern this season. Uh, this team I would highly recommend, um, and I may give it a shot myself. It looks very, very strong here. So that is Team 3, Metacham on the lead, Licky Tongue on the safe swap, and Lantern in the back to bring it home. So with all that said, that is Team number 3. Let's move along to Team number 4. All right, guys, here we go. Team number four, another very solid team for the Great League. We've got Defense Form Deoxys on the lead, Sableye in the back, and Reggie Steele uh, in the back as well to close Sableye on the safe swap. So uh, this team, very strong. You can easily um, swap out Deoxys. If you don't have one or you're not comfortable using Deoxys, you can easily swap out Deoxys and replace it with Swampert. Swampert uh, arguably addresses um, some of the threats to this team on the lead, particularly slightly better than Deoxys, but 
Deoxys overall very good on the lead. That is the only place I would consider ever running Deoxys, by the way. Um, but let we'll dive into that. Let's have a look at the scorecard first here. And not bad, very powerful scorecard here. We get a B for coverage, A for bulk, B for safety, and an A for consistency. Very strong scorecard here for team number four. Let's have a look at these matchups. Deoxys, again, one of the stronger leads you can run this season in Go Battle League. It addresses the Metacham lead, uh, as well as uh, other um, threats like uh, steel types that you may encounter on the lead, such as um, Reggie Steel. Uh, so, uh, Carbink, uh, Deoxys does okay, uh, slightly negative for Deoxys, but it puts in the work. Uh, that's one that. So what you can do is stay in soft lose lead on a car bank lead, um, or if you're really good, you can catch uh, one of those resistant moves on the Reggie Steel. The beauty of this team is uh, Reggie Steel also a solid safe swap as it can often put intense shield pressure on just about everything in the entire meta. So uh, that's how I would play a car bank lead. You can either soft lose the lead or catch the move if you really uh, know what you're doing onto Reggie Steel. Uh, Licky Tongue, uh, very tricky. Licky Tongue and Diggersby are going to be the toughest obstacles to overcome on the lead, and that is why I say Swampert um, is not a bad option to go as well on the lead with this particular team, as it does shut down uh, Diggersby uh, and can uh, has a little bit more flexibility up against Licky Tongue. Um, but with Licky Tongue. You can stay in there a little bit. I would not allow yourself to get uh, past 50% health. That That is just a, a, a reasonable range for Deoxys to still put in work in the Great League. And much like with Carbank, um, that's one where you'll want to catch the move, if you can, onto Reggie Steel. But if you have to eat the move, not the end of the world, as Licky Tongue does not hit particularly hard. But that is not one that you will be staying in on. Uh, at all. You can hang in there a little bit, uh, chip away at the health with those super effective counters, but at some point you're actually going to save Swamp Reggie. And uh, Swampert, uh, chip and dip with a Psycho Boost. Same goes for Gligar. But on those two, you can go into your Sableye after you chip. Uh, or grab a shield. And uh, Steelix. So you're going to want to you can tank a move um, unless it's a crunch. If they've built up to the crunch, that is worth a shield. But if it's the breaking swipe, uh, you can easily uh, take that no problem. But you'll want to chip that Steelix down a little bit into a manageable range for Sableye to get off a foul play plus the Shadow Claws to get rid of it. And if things go awry, you don't quite get that alignment. Uh, you've got Reggie in the back to handle a Steelix. No problem. Um... Chrysalia, you've got answers to Azumarill. Uh, Deoxys beats Azumarill on the lead. Mandibuzz, that's another tricky core breaker. Breaks up Deoxys and Sableye quite effectively. But Deoxys can fight back and can tank a Dark Pulse uh, quite comfortably and threaten Mandibuzz's health. They will likely not shield as Mandibuzz is about as tanky as it gets. But you will want to try and catch a move on the Reggie Steel. Uh, quite easy to do as Mandibuzz runs a three-turn fast move. So that's easy. That's an easy catch there. But everything else is pretty straightforward with this particular team. Very strong team overall. Definitely suits my particular play style, and I know it would suit a lot of yours out there as well. But again, uh, if you're not comfortable with uh, Deoxys, you can replace it with Swampert. And it will be very, mu uh, very much uh, effective as well. So that is Team 4. Deoxys on the lead. Sableye on the safe swap. And Reggie in the back to close the game. And with all that said, that is Team 4. Let's have a look at Team number 5. All right, my friends. Last but certainly not least, Team number 5. Um, a little bit of a throwback team here. Uh, it leads with Swampert on the lead, Pelipper on the safe swap, and Reggie Steele making a return as the closer for Team 5 here. Very, very solid team. Again, a bit of a throwback, but addresses the meta quite well. Let's have a look at the scorecard here. 
And not bad. Very solid. We get straight Bs across the board. B for coverage, B for bulk, B for safety, and a B for consistency. That is a very solid scorecard here for team number five. Swampert on the lead again addresses a lot of what we are seeing now on the lead in the Great League. As well as being able to get to those hydro cannons quite fast. Uh, allows you to chip and dip quite easily here in the Great League. So Swampert lead, we all know a lot of us are very experienced and seasoned in using Swampert, especially on the lead in the Great League. So it's going to have problem, not, but not too many problems as uh, there are not very many grass types that we are seeing pop up in the meta here, which is always a good sign if you're going to run Swampert. But we've got the coverage for that in the back. So uh, Swampert quite flexible on the lead. Licky Tongue uh, can be a bit tricky, but not not by no means impossible. Um, I would chip and dip Licky into Pelipper. Chip with that Hydro Cannon. Uh... Mantine, that's one that you can't really do anything. Uh, same goes for Pelipper. Uh, you're immediately going to go into your Pelipper safe swap. Uh, there's a strong case to be made on the water types like Mantine, Pelipper, and Jellicent to go into actually your hardest counter to force the swap. That is a good strategy uh, to force that swap so that you can gain some sort of advantage, particularly on Jellicent. Uh, not so much on Pelipper or Mantine as you have no advantage as a Swamper there whatsoever. But on Jellicent, which can also be a problem, as well as Mandibuzz, um, I, I'm actually leaning toward hard swapping Reggie to force the swap so that Swamper can come back in and get that energy lead advantage on a Jellison or a Mandibuzz because with an energy lead, uh, it can put in work up against those two in particular. That's how I would play those two if you happen to encounter them on the lead with Swamper, but everything else is pretty straightforward with this team. Uh, Pelipper, a very solid safe swap. Uh, really bad if they happen to have a lantern in the back. Uh, that is the worst case scenario because uh, now more than ever, lantern can easily just uh, farm down a Pelipper or a Mantine uh, quite easily. It will have no problems doing that whatsoever. And a loaded lantern can be a bit of a handful. Um, but we'll see. If you're reading a lantern in the back again, Reggie Steele, not only an excellent closer, but a solid safe swap as it puts that intense shield pressure on. So that is going to be a team read. If you're reading Lantern in the back, definitely do not safe swap the Pelipper. Um, but yeah, a very strong team overall, guys. And that about wraps it up. That is team five. Swampert on the lead, Pelipper on the safe swap. Reggie in the back. Uh, the season has... Um, uh, is in full force now. The meta has shifted quite a bit, uh, and it has been a little bit refreshing. Not too bad. So, uh, yeah, these are the teams, guys, to set you up for the most success in the Great League. A lot of these are very powerful teams and will help you with your climb for Season 16. But, guys, I had a blast. I hope you all enjoyed. As always, I thank you for watching, and keep up the grind. Thank you, guys.